Land operations are led by vehicles like trucks and cars. In the same way, aerial operations are done through the use of airplanes, helicopters, and the like. But what if the task to be completed requires you to go underwater? In places where big trucks and fast planes can no longer reach, like under the sea and beyond waves, submarines are there to help. Hello, and welcome back to Lord Gizmo. In today's video, we'll have a deep dive on how submarines are built. Stay tuned and continue watching if you want to know about its different parts and uses too. But before that, please don't forget to like this video and hit the subscribe button for more videos like these. If you've ever gone swimming or diving, you would know how hard it is to stay underwater for long periods of time. Even trained professional swimmers can only stay underwater for a couple of minutes in general. This is why it's been a challenge to perform underwater operations when manual labor is all that you rely on. This is also the same reason why it's been hard for researchers and even the Navy to search under the ocean for the past years. To resolve this, submarines were developed. Basically, submarines are underwater self-propelled crafts designed to help in underwater operations. They're made to carry people through and beyond waves. Their design is meant to withstand the harsh environment of the deep sea. Originally, submarines were made to help the Navy navigate through the deepest parts of the ocean. They've been very helpful in search and rescue operations too. Then their functions expanded in research as they were used for scientific research vessels. Submarines also have different types. Ballistic missile submarine is the type of submarine designed to have the capacity to launch ballistic missiles or SLBMs with nuclear warheads. These submarines are unique because they are built to have nuclear deterrence capabilities. Even when they fire missiles thousands of kilometers from their targets, they are still pretty difficult to detect thanks to its acoustic quieting feature. This makes them an ideal survivable deterrent in the event of a first strike and a key element of the mutual assured destruction policy of nuclear deterrence. The development of ballistic missile submarines can be traced back to the early 1950s when the United States and the Soviet Union were engaged in a nuclear arms race. Both nations realized the importance of having a submarine-launched ballistic missile SLBM, that could deliver a nuclear warhead to its target from a submerged position, making it more difficult to detect and intercept. The first ballistic missile submarine, the Soviet Union's B-59, was launched in 1959, and it marked the beginning of a new era in naval warfare. The submarine was equipped with a nuclear-armed R-7 missile, which was capable of traveling over 6,000 kilometers and reaching targets at high altitudes. This new capability greatly increased the reach and effectiveness of a nation's nuclear arsenal. Since the development of the first ballistic missile submarine, both the United States and the Soviet Union have continued to improve and modernize their fleets. Today, the United States and Russia are the only nations that operate ballistic missile submarines, although other countries such as France, the United Kingdom, China, and India have also developed their own submarine-launched ballistic missile programs. A submarine does not just appear overnight. Its assembly needs processes that can either last for hours or even days. In this part of the video, we'll get to know the common ways of how a submarine is built. However, it's important to note that no two types of submarines are made in the exact same way. To some degree, they can vary depending on what the submarine will be used for. Lord Gizmo will now deal with the building of attack submarines. If you're ready, just sit back and relax as we take you to the intricate process of attack submarine assembly. Submarines have two main components, which are the light hole and the pressure hole. One of the first steps of submarine building is the rolling and shaping of the exterior and outer hole, as well as the external body. But you may now ask, which of the holes is the exterior one? The light hole, or also known as the outer non-watertight hole, is the external hole. This is responsible for providing a streamlined shape to reduce drag. A submarine's external hull is made to provide buoyancy and shield the interior hull from harm. The external hull of a submarine is often constructed of a lighter, more flexible material, like aluminum or composite materials, and is designed to give the sub a hydrodynamic property required for subaquatic navigation. Additionally, the external hull of the submarine is equipped with hatches or portholes that offer access to the interior spaces as well as allow for entry and escape from the vessel. On the other hand, the pressure hull is the internal hull. The main purpose of this hull is to maintain the structural integrity of the submarine. A submarine's internal hull is made to be both airtight and watertight. It allows the submarine to dive and function underwater by separating the interior environment from the surrounding water. 
Typically, the internal hull is constructed of a robust and long-lasting material, such as steel or titanium, and reinforced with ribs and bulkheads to boost its rigidity and strength. The external hull of a submarine is normally constructed of a corrosion-resistant steel alloy that can endure the pressure of being underwater. A number of panels are used to build the hull, and they're all joined by welding to create a seamless structure. The panels are constructed from specialist steel alloys that are robust and lightweight, helping them to lighten the submarine's overall weight and enhance its underwater performance. Additionally, a special anti-fouling paint is applied to the hull to stop marine growth from adhering to the surface and slowing the submarine down. Most of the time, submarines are cigar-shaped with teardrop hull design because this shape has several advantages in terms of underwater performance and stability. Reduced drag or the resistance the submarine faces as it glides through the water is one benefit of the cigar shape. This is so that the submarine has less drag because of its long, narrow design, which restricts the volume of water that flows around it. By forming a smooth, streamlined shape that lessens turbulence and improves the efficiency of the submarine's propellers, the teardrop hull design, which is normally found in the back of the submarine, further decreases drag. The cigar shape also offers improved underwater stability, which is another benefit. This is due to the submarine's long, slender design, which makes it easier for it to move through the water and retain a stable posture. Different types of submarines require different types of engines, too. In this case, the submarine uses an inboard engine series 1163 for its propulsion. With its rated output of 6,000 kilowatts at a speed of 1,230 to 1,280 RPM, this engine has established itself as a powerful and reliable engine for marine applications. It can even handle fast vessels with heavy and intermediate load factors. The bore and stroke ratio of the 20 cylinders in the 20 volt 1163 M84 diesel engine is a 230 280 millimeter. Because we must adhere to the IMO2 criteria established by the International Maritime Organization, MARPOL, the engine's exhaust emission performance is essential to the proper operation of our submarine. Fuel consumption is one of the most important things that submarine operators and manufacturers take into account. At full power, the engine uses around 208 gallons kilowatt hour, or 1,621 liters per hour. The ideal fuel consumption, however, is 195 gallons per kilowatt hour, which suggests that we can run the engine more effectively and use less fuel. In order to avoid risks, secure and grounded connections must be made while putting an engine in a submarine's power system. After being connected, the engine needs to be secured, aligned, and the mounting brackets must be adjusted to provide stability. It's also essential to have adequate clearance and ventilation around the engine. The engine needs to be functionally tested after installation, running under various loads and speeds to guarantee dependability. Depending on the size and complexity of the engine, this operation could take several hours or even days. The engine can be commissioned for use in the submarine after it's in good operating order by running at full power for a while to ensure stability and dependability. Close monitoring of the engine's performance is essential to ensure it operates within safe parameters. Of course, it's not enough that the engine is just okay to operate. To ensure the safety of everyone on board, the submarine also has its other components and equipment checked. For example, its compressed air tank should be first checked to ease up the startup of the submarine. Then factors like the automatic oil level check and replenishment system, fuel oil treatment plant for separation of solids and water, and various exhaust system options should also be checked. An engine is a complex machine with various systems that play crucial roles in its operation. The starting system, which turns the engine over when the key is pressed, is essential for proper functioning. The oil system, which lubricates the engine's moving parts and keeps them cool, is crucial for maintaining its smooth operation. The fuel system, which delivers the necessary fuel, is essential for preventing engine stalling. The cooling system, which includes the radiator, coolant, and water pump, prevents the engine from overheating. The combustion air system, which includes the intake manifold, air filter, and throttle body, is essential for providing necessary air for combustion. The exhaust system, which removes exhaust gases from the engine, is crucial for preventing engine damage and meeting emissions regulations. Regular checks and maintenance of these systems are essential for ensuring the engine runs smoothly and efficiently. This may involve checking the oil level, replacing the air filter, checking the coolant level, and inspecting the exhaust system. By doing these routine maintenance tasks, you can prevent costly engine damage and prolong the vehicle's life.
The submarine is a vital component of any navy, providing a means for underwater travel and combat. To ensure that the submarine is able to operate effectively, it must be equipped with the necessary systems and components. One such component is the battery, which is used to power the submarine's engines and other systems during long periods underwater. The submarine is equipped with two battery rooms. One located at the prow and the other located at the stern of the vessel. Each battery room contains a total of 360 battery elements, 180 at the stern and 180 at the prow. These battery elements weigh approximately 700 kilograms each and stand at a height of 1.3 meters. The process of fitting the battery elements into the battery rooms is a complex and time-consuming process. It must be carried out continuously until both chambers are completed. The process involves lowering each element into the chamber and securing it into place using specialized hardware and equipment. This process must be carried out with great care and precision, as even the slightest error could result in damage to the battery or the chamber. Once the battery elements have been fitted, they must be charged and tested to ensure that they're functioning properly. This process is carried out using specialized equipment and can take several hours to complete. Once the batteries are fully charged and tested, the submarine is ready to embark on its next mission. One of the most critical components of a submarine's propulsion system is the propeller, which plays a crucial role in controlling the vessel's depth and course. Submarines are able to control their depth primarily by adjusting the angle of the ship. By changing the angle of the ship, the submarine can descend or ascend through the water. However, submarines also have the ability to control their depth using the PCP variable pitch propeller, which is a type of propeller that can be adjusted to control the speed and direction of the ship. The PCP variable pitch propeller, also known as the Pining Controllable Propeller, is a highly advanced propulsion system that stands out with its impressive performance features. One of the most notable features of the PCP propeller is its four or five blades, which provide increased efficiency and performance compared to traditional single-bladed propellers. In addition to its advanced design, the PCP propeller is also easy to maintain and control. The structure of the hub allows for easy assembly and disassembly of the blades, and the adjustment mechanism of the blades and the adjustment mechanism with the flexibility of attaching the blades from either the inside or the outside, making it easy for submarine operators to adjust the propeller for optimal performance. The pressure hull assembly is a critical component of a submarine as it's responsible for maintaining the internal pressure and protecting the crew from the external environment. The design and construction of the pressure hull play a crucial role in ensuring the safety and survivability of the submarine and its crew. One of the advantages of the PCP, Permanent Magnet Propulsion System, is the enhanced serviceability and reduced wearing parts costs. This is because the PCP system does not require traditional propellers, which can be subject to wear and tear. The use of permanent magnets also eliminates the need for regular maintenance of the motor. The outer hull or light hull of the submarine is responsible for its hydrodynamic performance and can accommodate equipment without stressing the pressure hull. The light hull is designed to reduce drag and increase speed, while also providing a stable platform for the crew and equipment. The pressure hull is made of a thick, high-strength steel that's able to withstand external pressure and maintain normal atmospheric pressure inside. It's divided by watertight bulkheads into compartments that are connected to the light hull through steel structural elements. The circular cross-section of the pressure hull ensures strength against comprehensive stress, which is crucial for maintaining the integrity of the hull at depth. The dive depth of the submarine is limited by hull design and material. Subs made of high-strength alloyed steel can typically reach depth of 250 to 350 meters, while titanium hulls offer greater depth potential, but their construction is costly. Multi-hulled submarines, such as the Typhoon class, can accommodate additional pressure hulls for improved survivability. The ability to operate underwater, which enables them to main, remain undetected by hostile forces, makes submarines desirable for a variety of reasons and essential for military operations. They have the ability to gather information, conduct surveillance, and start attacks covertly. They are able to operate in hazardous locations like deep ocean trenches or regions with strong currents or storms while transporting people and products underwater. The ability of submarines to explore the deep sea and collect information about the ocean and its inhabitants makes them helpful for scientific research as well. This information helps us better comprehend the planets and create new technologies and resources. To be more specific, attack submarines are useful because they can shoot precise missiles and torpedoes at enemy ships and submarines, are stealthy, and can operate underwater for long periods of time. 
and knowing how they're built, we also understand how these underwater operations functions. It also feels like we have taken part in, in these important feats. That ends our video on how attack submarines are built. We appreciate your company while we explore the world of attack submarine development. If you found this video informative, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more exciting content like this. And remember to hit that notification bell so you never miss an update. Until next time, stay tuned for more amazing tools and construction equipment that will leave you in awe. Thanks for watching.